Genesis chapter number 44. Genesis chapter 44. At ipagpapatuloy natin ang pag-aaral ng book of Genesis. And we learned that Genesis is divided into two sections. Yung unang part, yung part one ng Genesis, apat ang bahagi niyan, talking about creation, the fall, the flood, and then the nations, right? And, and that'll be from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 11. Tapos sa part 2, yung ikalawang bahagi ng Genesis, we learn about four key people. So if there's four events here, there's four key people here. Moses, a very, very good writer. And that will go from uh, chapters 12 to chapter 50. At sino yung apat na four key na mga patriarchs? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And now we're in Genesis chapter 44. And Joseph is now going to be testing his brothers. They just had a feast. They had a wonderful time in his kingdom, in his palace. And uh, now he's going to test them. It's early in the morning the next day. They're ready to go home. Their sacks are filled. And uh, the, the corn money is restored. All the money they had, Joseph didn't take from them. He gave them more and gave them more. And uh, so let's look at verse number 1. Uh, Genesis chapter 44, verse 1. And he commanded the steward of his house. That's that manager, okay? saying, fill the men's sack with food as much as they can carry and put every man's money in his sack's mouth and put my cup, the silver cup. Now, this is a very interesting cup because uh, this is the cup that customarily uh, sorcerers would use to tell the future or to interpret things. And it's definitely a cult And uh, uh, we ought not to be involved in anything about the occult. Now, Joseph, this is not obviously Joseph's cup. He, he ascended into the kingdom. Uh, they were already using it, okay? So, but anyway, um, Joseph's playing along with, uh, with the Egyptian custom here. Uh, he, does he need the cup? To figure out the future, to interpret dreams, or to receive a message from God? No, he doesn't. Hindi niya kailangan yung silver cup, no? So, um, sumasama lang si Joseph sa uh, ginagawa ng mga Egyptians, no? But he doesn't have anything to do with it, <clears throat> uh, as him personally. So, in the sax mouth, uh, the silver cup in the sax mouth of the youngest and his corn money. Ilagay daw sa sako ni Benjamin yung silver cup niya. Kasi ipagkakamalan si Benjamin na siya ang nagnakaw. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, let's look at verse number three. As soon as the morning was light, these men were sent away and they are in their asses. And they were gone out of the city and yet not, a, not yet afar off, Joseph said to his steward, Up, follow after these men, the men, uh, when thou uh, dost overtake them, saying to them, Wherefore have you rewarded evil for good? That's the theme. Um, that's the theme of really society. You reward evil for good. God does all these good things to us, but what do we do in return for the goodness of the Lord? We return evil for good. Sometimes we sin against Almighty God. In the face of all His goodness, you would think we would follow Him, we would not sin, we would, we would uh, do our best to, to, to live right. But there are times when we fail. And when we fail, we're rewarding evil for good. We should reward good for good. But God's the God of reversals. You remember that from last week? God is the God of reversal. And He's going to reverse this. He's going to reward good for evil. God's going to reward good for evil. And that's because of His grace. This is the God of all grace. The God who does not return evil for evil. He would be right to give us what we deserve. But because He is gracious... 
He does not give us what we deserve. That's grace. God not giving us what we deserve. We deserve judgment. We deserve hellfire. We deserve condemnation. We deserve shame and guilt. But you know, God doesn't throw that on our face. Especially for those who know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. He deals with us in grace. God doesn't wait for us to come to Him. God in His sovereignty comes to us. We love Him because He first loves us. And God loves the whole world. He sent His Son to die for everyone. So everyone has the opportunity to receive this grace. But not everybody's making that decision. Not everybody's making that decision. Uh, so, God, uh, we see here, wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? And so now, uh, let's look at uh, verse number five. Is it not, it, uh, is it, it is not this in, it's in which my Lord drinketh, whereby he indeed he divineth? Ye have done evil in doing so. Sa pinakamalan sila, nalagnakaw sila. They were framed. <laughs> That they stole, and I'm sure they were shocked about this. Uh, and uh, verse number seven, they said unto him, Wherefore saith my Lord these words, God forbid that thy servant should do according to this thing. And behold, the money which we found in our sack's mouth, we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan. How should we steal out of thy Lord's house silver or gold? They had plenty of money. They had, pl- they had money to restore the sack, uh, uh, the corn money. Uh, why should we steal? This is apparently uh, Judah speaking here. Uh, With whomsoever thy servants it be found, let him die, and we also be my Lord's bondmen. So here they're uh, they're saying basically, whoever stole, they're convinced nobody stole, but whoever stole. Let him die. <laughs> well, guess where they found the silver cup? <laughs> in the sack of Benjamin. And I'm sure they were all shocked. But notice in verse 10, the steward did not take on the death penalty. Look at verse number 10. And he said, now also let it be according to your words. He with whom it is found shall be my servant. And ye shall be blameless. So the steward basically said, well, yeah, sure, let's go ahead and do what you say. But I, I, what I want is whoever, whoever's guilty will be my servant. Meaning to say, you, won't, you, you all will be able to go home except for the one who stole it. <clears throat> Then he speedily took down every man's sack to the ground and opened every man his sack and searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack and they rent their clothes and laid at every man his ass and returned to the city they went back to see Joseph now that's an improvement because years ago they would have just neglected their youngest brother and they would have allowed him to die they would have allowed him to just stay in the pit. But what a heart change, these brothers. They rent their clothes. They said, oh no, not Benjamin. Of all the children, why Benjamin? And you know Jacob's love for Benjamin. So look at verse number 14. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house. And this is... Now, look, Genesis 38, di ba pinag-aralan natin yung Judah and Tamar? And how this, that was the worst chapter that Judah ever had his behavior. Well, in chapter 44, this is Judah's best <laughs> behavior. Judah, Judah at his finest. And really, this is where we see that God selected Judah to be in the Messianic line. Because Judah is willing to be just like Jesus Christ. Look at verse number uh, 
uh, uh, 14. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. Oh, again, they made obeisance to him. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? Watch ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? Uh, and Judah saith, What shall we say unto my Lord? What shall we speak or how shall we clear ourselves? God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. Hey, God found out was God found out the iniquity of thy servants. Uh, Judah here pleads and begs and begins to speak to Joseph uh, as a representative of his brothers. And it's interesting, it says, God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Uh, can I tell you something? Be sure of one thing. Be sure of this one thing. Well, you know what you can be sure about? Be sure that your sin will find you out. Oh my, God sees the hidden sins. All right, verse number 17. And he said, God forbid that I should do so. But the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father. Hey, guys, listen, I'm not here. I don't want to hurt you or destroy you. I'm just going to make the, the young man my slave. Y'all can go home. You're free. Go in peace. Problem is. Hindi, nila pwedeng, hindi sila pwedeng bumalik kay Jacob. Nawala si Benjamin. And here is where Judah shines. Verse 18. Then Judah came near unto him and said, O my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ears and let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servants, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? And we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and his child, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead. And he alone is left of his mother. This talking about Rachel. And his father love, loveth him. Verse 21, And thou sayest unto thy servants, Bring him down unto me, that I may set mine eyes upon him. And we said unto my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father. For if he should leave his father, his father would die. And thou sayest unto thy servants, Except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall not see my face no more. And it came to pass, when we came up thy servant, my father told him the words of my Lord, And our father said, go again and buy us little food. And we said, we cannot go down if our youngest brother be with us. Um, be with us. <clears throat> Then we will go down, for we may not see the man's face except our youngest brother be with us. So J Judas explaining the background <laughs> uh, to Joseph. And of course, I'm sure Joseph is shocked as well to learn about the background. Uh, seeing the concern they have now for their father and now for their brother. They grew a heart. The brothers grew a brain and a heart. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> uh, verse 27, And thy servant, my father, said unto us, Ye know that my wife bare me two sons. Talking about Rachel. And it's, again, Jacob's choice was Rachel. And... Uh, He recognized her as his wife and two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. And the one went out from me and I said, surely he is torn in pieces and I saw him not since. Talking about Joseph. And Joseph's probably thinking, no, he's not torn in pieces. <laughs> and the one went out from me and I said, surely he is torn in pieces. I saw him not since. And if you take this also from me, Benjamin, and mischief befall him, He shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. And now, therefore, when I come to thy servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life, 
It shall come to pass that when he seeth the lad is not with us, that he will die. And thy servant shall bring down the gray hairs of thy servant our father with sorrow to the grave. For thy servant became surety for the lad. Now verse 32. Judah is saying basically now. I made a promise to my father. That I am going to be a substitute for my brother. For thy servant became surety for the lad. Surety has the idea of insurance. <laughs> security. <laughs> Parang siya yung security deposit. Siya yung substitute. So whatever happens to Benjamin will happen to Judah. And this is amazing because Judah was really one of the perpetrators of the, of the demise against Joseph earlier. <clears throat> Verse 32, And for thy servant became surety for the lad unto my father, saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman to my Lord, and let the lad go with his brethren. This is also a picture of Jesus Christ. This is a picture of what Jesus Christ did for us. He pleads us to the Heavenly Father, and he says, don't punish them, punish me. And uh, what a... This is here where Judah really shines. And so now, this is why God selected Judah to bring to us the Messiah, our substitute. And, uh, and so this is a very virtuous chapter for Judah. Uh, the worst is chapter 38 for Judah. The best is chapter 44 for Judah. Verse number 34 For how shall I go up to my father, and the lad be not with me, lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. So <clears throat> that's where Moses leaves off Genesis chapter 44. So if you want to know what's going to happen, you're going to have to wait till next week. <laughs> Wait till next week. Ganyan talaga si Moses. Pag nagsulat si Moses. It's a cliffhanger. And uh, we'll see what happens next week. But Judah here is like Jesus. He is the sinner's substitute. And uh, Jesus is our substitutionary sacrifice. He took our place. We're the ones who sinned against God. We're the ones who are supposed to pay for our sins. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Judah offered to take Benjamin's place. But Jesus did not just offer to take our place. You know what he did? He actually took our place. And Jesus is better than Judah. <laughs> so Judah made an offer, but Jesus actually did take our place. And here the brethren demonstrated their repentance. How? By not abandoning Benjamin. They will not leave Benjamin. The sin that they committed against Joseph, they abandoned Joseph. But now they grew a heart and a brain And they are not going to abandon their brother. All right? And so we see all these truths here. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Father in heaven, Lord, we're thankful, God, for the mercy and the love that you have for us in sending us a substitute from heaven, uh, the very person of God the Son, made into the likeness of man, not just offering himself as a substitute, but becoming an actual substitute for us, for those who trust in Him, for those who believe in Him to be their Lord and Savior. We thank You, God, for our great substitute, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that we would draw closer to You and walk closer to You and learn these truths that You see everything You know our sins. You know our iniquities. 
And help us not to return evil for good. Help us, Lord, to love you and thank you and walk with you in great reverence and fear and serve you, Lord, because of your grace towards us. We love you and ask your blessing upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen.